Hello there, this is a continuation of my XREF video, um, kind of part two, where I go into a little bit more detail about some of the slightly more advanced tools for working with external references. I'm starting with this diagram again because uh, it's just a reminder of how XREFs are commonly used very frequently. So uh, I talked about this a lot in my first XREF video. I'm going to use this to kind of um, show you why some of the tools that I'm going to go through are important in this particular video. The first thing is clipping an external reference. And an example of that is shown here. This is an, an external referenced floor plan onto which all the annotation such as dimensions and room tags have been overlaid. So if I uh, remove the external reference, you can see there how the annotation is sitting on top of the XREF essentially. But the XREF has been clipped to fit into a specific region on this particular sheet because the overall plan is much larger. In order to show you how it's larger, I'm going to actually um, demonstrate one of the other tools that's very handy. I mentioned this in the earlier XREF video, and that's the open X open command. If you want to simply open your external reference immediately, you can select it and then click open reference in the ribbon or right click and go to open XREF there, either one. So that opens the original external reference file, which you can see now. This demonstrates how much it's been cropped off or clipped, like these sidewalks that extend out on either side. You can see how they do not show up here because of the fact that the XREF has been clipped. It's kind of basically just like cropping a photograph that allows you to um, cut off the pieces that are not necessary on this particular sheet so that it will fit in a smaller region. This is very handy also on enlarged plans. For example, up here there are enlarged plans of uh, bathrooms and other areas, kitchen, and it's the same XREF. It's just been copied and clipped. And that's what this boundary here is for, is the clip boundary, essentially. So I'm going to make another copy of the external reference here so that you can see what I'm talking about. So let's say I wanted to uh, clip this. Uh, you can uh, do this if it's not clipped already, or you can reclip something that's already clipped, either one. I can select the XREF and then hit Create Clipping Boundary, or you can also type XClip. Either one will give you the clipping tool. Now at the command line, it has options such as on and off, delete. Uh, I can do a new boundary. I can generate a polyline from the existing clip. Um, so you have a few options. Normally what I do is new. So I'm going to hit space because that's the default option in the brackets down there. And then delete old boundary. So I want to do that. So I'm going to hit space for yes. And then I can either accept rectangular or I can select a polyline that's already drawn. In this particular case, you can see it's not a rectangle. So I had already drawn a polyline and then you would simply use that option. So I would do S for select polyline and then select it. Or you could do polygonal and do P for that option and then outline the shape that you wanted. So it does not have to be a rectangle, although a rectangle is obviously the most common. I'm going to do a rectangle for now just to keep it simple. So I'm going to do R for rectangle. And then I can now specify the first corner point and then the second corner point. And it clips the XREF down to that very specific size and shape. So very easy to do. As you can see, you just have to uh, follow your command prompt to remember the options because there are a few steps there. I'm going to demonstrate that one more time. So I'm going to select the XREF. Create clipping boundary. So now I will do a polygonal. And I can just basically outline the shape that I want in any shape necessary. And then when I'm done, I hit space or right click or enter. And now there's my very weird shaped external reference clip. I can also just remove the clip by hitting remove clipping at the top. Or by using the X clip with the off option. And then that exposes the entire XREF again. One thing that I didn't mention in my earlier external reference video is that it is important to consider what layer you put your XREF on. It has to be on some layer, just like any other object in your drawing. You want to make sure that you don't put it on the DEF points layer or else your XREF won't print. 
Uh, if you put it on a specific layer that you're not uh, careful about, you may find out that it's turned off later. You know, if you put it on your dimensions layer and then turn off your dimensions, obviously the XREF is going to disappear. So most of the time people either use the zero layer or you can make a specific layer for XREFs, um, which is what is done in this particular CAD file. So don't forget that, and I failed to mention that in my previous video. Another very handy tool is being able to edit the XREF from the host file. In order to demonstrate this, I need to close the base file that I already have open. So I switched over and I can close that. Now I'm back in the sheet file. <clears throat> if the file is already open, it's kind of like two people are trying to edit it at the same time. So it's not going to let me demonstrate this tool. So by closing it, now I can edit it from the host file. You just have to be careful not to do any major changes here. I have seen people get trapped in the edit tool because they've made a lot of changes spanning between um, objects that live in this file and the XREF and then it gets confused. So you only do this to minor changes. You go into a sp particular special edit mode, make a minor change and then leave. So you don't want to forget that you're in edit mode because then you can't save your overall file. So it's uh, for quick changes only. So you can select your XREF go to edit reference in place in your ribbon and uh, it's going to give you options of whether you want to over edit the overall reference or a particular sub block or xref within the um, xref that is currently selected so normally 90 percent of the time i want to edit the overall xref so i leave that and then hit ok you'll notice that uh, it's going to take a second to think your ribbon will change and everything else that lives in the CAD file becomes grayed out. So now I'm actually editing the base reference and you can see as you select objects, it's not selecting the whole block anymore. It's selecting the individual components. So I can make whatever minor changes I needed. And then your ribbon has tools to save the changes, discard the changes. So that would be what you do when you're finished editing, either save the changes and exit or discard the changes and exit. You also have the option to add to the working set or remove to the working set. And these are very powerful tools. If you add to the working set, basically what you're doing is you're taking an object from the host file and moving it to the base file. If you remove from the working set, you're essentially doing the opposite. You're taking an object in the base and pulling it into the host file, removing it from the original base. So those are very handy tools, but just be careful not to do that on an object that you don't really want to. Um, so that you, you won't find out later, hey, where'd that object go? Why is it missing from my base? Well, that's because you, you know, did that back in your host file. So I'm going to discard the changes because I'm just demonstrating. But again, uh, if you made a small change, you would hit save changes. And then it's going to ask if you uh, want to save. It's going to confirm, hit OK, and then you're done. So I'm going to discard uh, and then hit OK to confirm. And now I'm back to normal editing mode. The last thing that I want to demonstrate uh, is actually not about external references itself, but about managing the layers in the file management process here. Um, and I mention this because it's a very common way for design firms and architecture firms and engineering companies to work, is to have a plan that's attached to various sheets. In this process, in that um, original base plan, this file right here, you normally then have all the floor plan, ceiling plan, and roof plan information drawn on top of one another. Now that could be three-dimensionally or it could be two-dimensionally, kind of flat, either one. But you have to be able to manage that with layers very well in order for it to be easy to work with. And otherwise you're going to be overwhelmed with having all that information stacked on top of one another in that one particular CAD file. So let me demonstrate that. I need to open the base again. So I'm going to do the open reference tool. So now this has floor plan information, ceiling and roof plan all here. And I'm going to show you that by using the lay on command, L-A-Y-O-N. When I turn on all the layers that way, you can see how complex this is. Floor plan, there's even vehicles shown, uh, roof plan, ceiling plan, all drawn one on top of the other. Very detailed and hard to understand and hard to read. So you couldn't possibly work like this or you'd go crazy. So what most companies do um, are very careful control of the layers. So there's layers for the floor plan, layers for the roof, layers for the ceiling, 
and by turning them on and off in a logical manner, you can make the file easy to work with. So how do you do that? Well, using the layer states is one of the uh, most efficient ways. The layer state pulldown is right above your layer pulldown, and you can see there's three layer states in this particular CAD file, floor plan, ceiling plan, and roof plan. And by hitting one of those layer states, you're just instantly toggling between what's turned on and what's turned off. So it's like a snapshot. The floor plan layer state has the roof layers and the ceiling layers turned off. The uh, reflected ceiling plan layer state has the other layers turned off. And then obviously the roof plan layer state has the other layers turned off. So you can set this up in a few ways. You can go through the methodical process of turning on and off all the layers that you want and then go up and hit new layer state. That would be one way. The other way is to hit the manage layer states and then you can create your layer states right here by hitting new and then edit them afterwards. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, I like to kind of just use the layer state manager this way. So I'll hit manage and then I hit new and make whatever layer states I want and then I can hit edit and turn off the layers that I don't want. Um, so that's one easy way to do this. And then you can also use this to um, double click on the layer state that you want and it will restore it. It's the same thing as choosing it from the pull down. So that's an easy way to switch back and forth. These also work in your sheet file. So here even in this sheet file when you hit your layer state pull down it's bringing in the layer states that are in your external reference file. So if I uh, external referenced it in, obviously it's going to come in with all the layers on normally. Um, then I can hit the floor plan layer state to get it to the condition I want very quickly. Same thing on your ceiling plan, you can hit the ceiling plan layer state to switch over to get that looking like a ceiling plan very quickly. So that's an easy way to control your layers uh, if you're trying this so that uh, it's not going to be overwhelming for you.